So let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. Where's um, the agenda? Are you uh, sure? Um, e electronically. Yeah, did you not get the agenda electronically? I can forward it to you, Fran. You can put it up on the screen too. Ooh. True. Shall I do that? Shall I like show off my Zoom powers here? All right. I'm just going to kind of try and leave that a little undercover. Um, there we go. So now that means everybody gets to see that. Um, that's, I don't have it. Somehow I feel like I'm not, I didn't do, let me do the stop share. It doesn't, I don't think that was what I, um, what I meant to do here. Let me do it a little differently. It worked actually. I'll do a screen share and I'll put that agenda in my screen. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There we go. You will automatically. You had it before, Joyce. Okay. So yes. have we got it now? Yeah. Okay. But I'm on the phone with her. Okay. So Lynn is on the phone, so she can't see it. Oh. Right. I don't have a camera on my. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Do you, <laughs> computer. Do you have, so. Do you I can see your... you guys. You can't see me. <laughs> That's right. But we can see your name. Um, would you like me to just email you a copy of that? Of the oh, agenda? I yeah. I have one. Yeah, oh, okay. Have then it. you don't need to see it then. That's fine. Okay. All right. So our, um, our agenda item one is the COVID-19 state of emergency. Um, item 1A, to discuss the current state of emergency, emergency orders, and emergency legislation. Um, I think Brian is probably in the best place to lead that discussion. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for the purposes of, of, of this meeting today, in terms of what makes it important for us to talk about is, is the governor's new order that was issued yesterday that essentially um, closes all non-essential businesses um, from March 24th, so today at noon until April 7th. Um, and there'll obviously be, or I would suspect, depending on how everything plays out, it might be extended or, or we'll just have to see what happens. Um, but in terms of how it applies, I just want to talk about how it applies to the town's operations um, and what we should be doing and what the board thinks we should be doing. Obviously, you know, input from the department heads as to what they need to get done in the next two weeks, I think would be important for us to hear. Um, so maybe that's a good place to start. Okay. Um, well, shall we go around? Um, I don't know if they're in the same order for yours, but uh, upper left, I see uh, John Hannum. So um, John. Yes. G <laughs> Um, wait, wait a second, Joyce. Brian, should Keith be on this call? Um, I thought Keith was going to join this call, yeah. Okay. Keith is in my office with me. Oh, okay. Okay, so he's hearing as well. Okay. Um, good. Then um, maybe just go around the department heads and say what it is you're doing and what you think you <clears throat> need that you maybe don't have or will run out of. Is that about what you're thinking, Brian? Um, yeah, we can talk about that. And also, you know, the orders for the next two weeks, so kind of the next two weeks, sort of what they need, what needs to be done operationally that would require employees to be um, in one of our buildings and, you know, whether they could do those activities from home or not. Okay, so concentrating on the next two weeks and concentrating on uh, uh, keeping operations going, will people need to be in buildings, et cetera. Okay, um, why don't we just, I'll just go around the, the screen here. I've got John up in the upper left, go ahead. Well, if there's no emergencies for the next two weeks, I don't have a problem staying home. So, uh, okay. other than that, uh, we've ordered uh, emergency supplies, masks and, Gloves, I believe they've been ordered. Uh, I told they were. 
we have okay. minimal supplies. And like I said, if we don't have any emergency calls, then we're going to be all good. Okay. And if you have an emergency call? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with what we have. We have some minimal supplies. And then after the first couple calls, then we'll have to deal with it. We'll okay. have to beg, borrow, or steal. Yeah, okay. Typically, how many calls do you have per week? One, two. Okay, so not. for two weeks, we're looking yeah. at something like four, maybe five calls maximum? Yeah. Uh, do you think you have enough for mm -hmm. five calls? No. Okay. What are the things that you may run out of? Well, I, I don't have them, but I've been told they're in the emergency operations. There's equipment in the emergency operations center that I it, that's where our reservoir is, if we have okay. one. Am I right, Jim? Okay. So that's the right. emergency operations center may have what you need? Yes. Okay. How many... Um, calls do you think you could take with the materials you have? A couple. Okay. So you're about one to two calls before yep. you need to be resupplied. So John, give me an example or two of supplies. Uh, masks, gloves, gowns, face shields. Okay. If, so, if we uh, had, if, if you did a, a, a um, if you were called to another town, would they have those things? Or if you had to call other towns into things, would, would they have those things to they share? Could. Yeah, they should, yes. Okay. And our EMS should too. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Though I know that they've been I, working stuff as, as John has. Right. Okay. I have put in a request with MEMA for masks, gowns. We do have a supply of gloves now. We got some in yesterday. Um, MEMA is doling things out very sparingly, um, and we need to prove the need for any masks, especially. So I've been trying to do that. They wanted to know how much, how many we had in stock, and I explained that um, we would have probably enough for one call without reusing masks. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from them on whether we will get a supply. Okay. NEMA is, sorry, um, the is NEMA is dealing with police and fire. Yeah. Um, and DPH, I believe, is dealing with EMS and other medical agencies. Right. Okay. So, John, I have a question. How do you relate to... Uh, South County EMS, I mean, if depending, I guess, on the incident, do they come the same time or, or do you wait for them or, or how do you coordinate that? If it's an emergency call, if we're going to somebody's house, Fred, we, will, we would only go on some life-threatening emergencies like a cardiac arrest or yeah. if manpower. Uh, and that would be the only time we would go and we would obviously, I would hope that my captains would limit the number of people that go in that house to only what we only what needs to be there right wayne oh, um, he left. Uh, wayne has stepped away from the camera wayne left he can't hear uh, that's that's i just would fully expect that uh if we go to a car accident where the unknown is out there then we would probably we would take as much precaution as we needed to do but we can still use our fire gear and we can use our air packs if if that's what has to happen. But will South County EMS eventually show up as well? Oh, Talk? absolutely. Okay. More, more than likely, they would go first, and we would be called for uh, muscles, if you will, or numbers. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, John. Um, next on here would be Wayne, if he were there. Let me go to Jim then. Um, how are you for the next two weeks? Uh, for the next two weeks, we, we, we have a standing order right now um, as far as police response goes. So medical calls, if a 911 call comes in for a medical call, um, our dispatch is going through a protocol for uh, the coronavirus. So they have a series of questions they ask if there's flu-like symptoms, if they're having difficulty breathing. So if that's a positive response, we're not even going into the house. We can go and stage outside if, if it's a life or death situation. We do have some masks 
um, and Tyvek suits and we've got gloves if we had to go into a house. Um, but at this point, we're not even going into the house because we're not going to be able to provide much assistance anyways um, unless it's a life or death situation. So that, as far as medical calls, that's, that's how that stands right now. Um, any other police response call, we kind of take it as, it as it comes in, depending on what the call is. We've had some calls for larcenies. We've had some other things, just regular police business that's going on. Um, we handle those calls like we normally do. Um, social distancing, we talk to people outside instead of inside. Um, we've had a couple of crashes that we've had to investigate. Um, we're trying not to stop motor vehicles on a regular basis, actively going out and doing it if we have to. Um, we're not taking possession of their of their license. We just have them show us the license. We take the number, so there's there's no paperwork exchanged um, in that sense. And the police station, as of right now, is closed to the public. We've got a sign posted with our telephone numbers that they can call if they need um, any assistance. But at this point, we have um, probably a dozen masks split up between the two cruisers. We have some suits, Tyvek suits. We have, uh, I think we have probably, we had eight boxes, but I think we got five more, six more boxes in that, that are in the EOC right now. Um, we've got an additional 20 masks that I've got, I got from Lynn. And we have probably 20, 20 more Tyvek suits. I have supplied the fire department with six masks, um, two boxes of gloves, six Tyvek suits, and we don't have any face shields, so um, okay. that's, that's what. So how does that um, uh, go as far as the next two weeks? Do you feel like that is enough for the next two weeks? Or I know that's a, an opinion question. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, at, at this point, I, I don't think we're in critical stage because like I said, if it's a life or death medical call, then we have enough supplies to be able to go in and help. I don't anticipate um, more than 30 life or death calls that we would have to go on right now. Uh, we respond to the medical calls, but South County EMS, we're gonna go along with their protocol. They're only sending one EMT in, into the house to do an initial assessment. So if they're only sending one EMT in, we don't need to be in there either. So um, we'll, okay. help them. we'll help them Alrighty. when needed. But other than that, we have cleaning supplies. We're disinfecting the station, keeping that clean. We have one officer that traveled to Florida and then California, he came back last Friday. <clears throat> um, so he's, he's kind of on hold right now. He's not allowed to come back for a couple of weeks, um, just as a precaution. He's not in lockdown or okay. um, quarantine or anything like that, but he's just not, he's not gonna be doing any shifts for the next couple of weeks until we know okay. his status. But other than that, everybody's healthy and no issues. Okay. Uh, let me see, the other department had I, um, well, that who's on here is Keith, I think. So um, if Keith can pipe in and let us know about next two weeks and you know people and access to right? buildings. Yes. Okay. Um, just uh, you know where I stand. Um, obviously, in the highway department is really absolutely nothing that really can be done at home, other than you know I could monitor like my emails and phone calls, but. There's nothing that we can take home to do with us. Um, as far as essential things that may or may need, may or may not need to be done, uh, really isn't anything that I would consider essential. They can't wait, other than if we have emergencies, which we can all respond to on an on-call basis. So I don't feel there's any need that we have to be present on a daily basis. We can respond to calls. If there's a tree down, we can call people in and deal with that on an on-call basis. Okay. All right. Um, and I see Wayne is still away from the phone there. Um, so I can't really hear from him, but the water department, I'm guessing it's not, medical supplies are not gonna be an issue. Right, and I don't need it. I the few supplies I have, I don't really see any need to need any. Okay, 
um, Fran and Lynn, do you have um, anything you want to add here? Um, from the treasure collector and town clerk side of things, um, as far as being whether we're essential or not, I, there are circumstances where we would need to be essential if we want the money to continue to flow and pay our bills. Um, but as far as being in the office on a, a daily, you know, eight-hour shift, then I don't think that that's necessary. There is some work we can do from home, and if it became absolutely necessary to do that work from home, I could actually pick up my treasure collector computer and bring it home with me and work from home. Um, given that it has uh, an outside software on it, it's not something I can load at home. Uh -huh. um, it's not through the internet. It's it's hardwired kind of into my program. So um, the town no, clerk side, the only computer, right. That, what Pardon? you're saying is you need that exact computer. You can't, it's not yeah, you can exactly. Load on home computer. Okay. And the town clerk side, um, right now, the only thing that I have that's pressing is the special town meeting that we'll probably discuss a little bit. Um, and then I'll be doing plans for elections. But over the next two weeks, there would be really nothing I would need to do. I'd have I would have to make arrangements for nomination papers and things like that to be dropped in the after hours box. Uh, and I would have to check that after hours box on a regular basis. Uh, but it wouldn't require me to be in the office for, you know, for the whole stretch. So, okay. and I think and from the emergency management side, I think I've already explained most of that with uh, dealing with MEMA and the supply issues. Okay. Lynn, is um, uh, our accountant coming in to pay bills? Just curious. Um, I haven't heard from her lately. It was her. Um, I haven't heard that they are not coming in. Let's put it that way. My guess is they may just pick up the pile of bills and take them to their home hmm. in order to do them, but because uh, they do have that capability to um, do that remotely. So uh, to that would have that would allow them to avoid excessive exposures here. So okay, but I haven't heard from. I don't know if Brian's heard anything on that or not. So okay, so, so Brian's Lynn. shaking his head no. <laughs> so, so Lynn, uh, I haven't talked to Cynthia since last Tuesday or so. Is she been coming in or working from home? She is here today. She came in today. Okay. So I don't know whether, I, I don't know what she can do from home and. Yeah, I, I don't know what internet access she has at home. She could be very yeah. limited. So you may want to get in touch with her directly. Okay. Now I saw, thought I saw yeah. Wayne's arm just a moment ago. Wayne, are you there? Yeah. I just I sent him a I sent him a message to see if he was okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he collapsed right and then I saw him moving on the camera. So yeah, he was speaker yeah. problems. He couldn't hear us. Oh, possibly. He's got himself muted too. So he does. Right, but he should still be able to hear us if his mic. So I'll, I'll, Here, I'll I'll text him. I just texted him. You did okay. Yeah. You can just do the, ch the chat feature too. He just said the chlorine pump hose broke and set up set an alarm off. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. Then we can well we can check in with him when when he's got that situation under control. Then hmm. it seems like is it, he's got a good excuse for not being here. Okay. Um, so that some of that uh, covers what's the next item on the agenda. Hey, hey Lynn, Lynn, we didn't go to Fran yet. Oh, Fran, I, uh, sorry about that. No problem. Yeah, we're sort of um, getting daily reports from DPH, obviously, and um, guidance, what we should be doing. The latest with the governor's um, um, announcement is that 
you know, most businesses in town are not essential. Well, not most, but there are quite a few that are fit the bill. And the biggest one being Yankee Candle, I think. And we will be doing some drive-bys today. I first our health agent to check after um, noon to find out if they're open down there, among other places. Okay. <clears throat> Hey, Everything Frank, changes though on a daily basis. So, uh, and you know, the things I've been sending, I, I don't know if everyone's gotten them about how to apply for funds and things like that. Uh, somehow I'm also the lead uh, in the foothills for the time being. So I've been wearing that hat too, trying to get funding for foothills towns as well, but we're low on the list. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, hey, could I ask a question, Joyce? Fran, sure, is the transfer station is gonna remain open, correct? Right. For the time being, um, we're taking precautions, as you've probably seen if you've gone down there. We don't want to create another health crisis by closing it. That would get us into yeah. trouble pretty quickly. So, um, yes, for the time being. But the swap shop, I think, should be closed if it isn't already. It has been. It has been, okay. And the book, book box, too, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. and we have a how, much it, how much assistance does do citizens need, can you restrict access from the attendance? Because yeah, we're, we're asking. Not have any contact. Yeah, we're obviously, we have a sign there. We, we put it up on the website to not to come too close and not to linger long, get your business done quickly and leave. And for the most part, I was down there Saturday and most people are, are obeying that kind of distancing. And, um, which is good. Although I was down there at the peak time, probably 10 30 to 11 and, uh, or 10 to 11. And it was quite a few, quite busy as you might expect. So it, it is, um, a little difficult, uh, Quint who's fits the category of older, older resident, uh, was wearing a mask and he has gloves. Jim provided a mask to uh, a couple of masks. And we have gloves down there and sanitizer and stuff like that. Again, keeping the time of contact very limited. Obviously, there's a money exchange going on for bag purchases, and that, that's problematic. But there's not much we can do about that at this point. Because yeah. it seems like the demand is going to be much greater these days because everyone's at home. Hmm. Well, they may be using less, too. So less garbage, possibly. We don't know. I haven't seen it. It hasn't been that long to tell whether the amount of garbage has increased or decreased. Or usage, for that matter. OK. Um, can I ask a general question? And maybe that there's no answer for it right away, but just to put it in the back of people's minds. Um, there are places that are using homemade masks when it's not critical that it's an N95 mask, for example, which, where does that line get drawn? I have no idea. Um, but I've got a friend who has been making these masks. She actually broke her sewing machine making these masks for uh, Cooley Dickinson and other area hospitals. Um, so she's going to come over tomorrow and I'm going to loan her my sewing machine. But I, um, I just want to put that idea out there that if there's, um, if homemade masks can be useful in any way here for maybe some of the lower risk situations, then that's something where we have probably the capacity within the community to, to do that. Um, I see Lynn was that might have something to say about that. Um, yeah, I've noticed that too. I've seen it posted in different locations um, on making the regular surgical masks. We do not have a supply at all of just regular surgical masks. Um, and those would be helpful in those instances where someone might just have, you know, a cold or whatever else that might not be the virus. Um, so yeah, that, that would be a great idea if we can get it out there. Matter of fact, I received a email, um, today that had the instructions on how to make one of the masks. Yeah. So, uh, we can get that out to people. 
Yeah, the radio story I heard this morning said Cooley Dickinson has posted uh, mm -hmm. um, information about how to make them and so on. And I yep. may have materials here. I have to take a look through and see what materials I have that I can um, uh, put towards that. Um, but it seemed like yeah, something they recommend where... cotton materials and um, probably mm -hmm. because of their washability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brand, All right. So let's keep, keep that in the back of our minds as we as we go here. If there's um, if we can think of an organized way to um, to get that started on whatever level, that might be a good thing. I've got a, a list of people who subscribe to the scoop. I've got you know, the library has a, a a big list. We could probably get the word out through through those kinds of lists as well for people who are at home who might otherwise you know not have any not have as much stuff to do. What's what's the actual difference between the, the two masks? And I don't know, maybe Jim has, do you have one in the office to show us what what the one looks like that they're supposed to be wearing? Maybe I don't Fran go online. I haven't question. been online to see that. I, I, I have no idea. I'll, I'll go grab one. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Fran or Lynn, can you describe the difference between a surgical mask and one of these N95 masks? Uh, uh. Maybe Lynn can. I haven't. Uh, <laughs> well, the surgical <laughs> haven't mask are basically is just to protect you. And yeah, the N, uh, N95 actually have filtration systems in them. Okay. So it's a, a, a better filtration than just a piece of cloth right. over your mouth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, exactly. So the level of filtration is probably the main difference. Would that be a reasonable? And yes, the I would say that's a good explanation. Mm -hmm. So, so the masks that you would use to like spray an apple tree, so you don't get that crap in your face, that's not going to work that well. Right. Well, it depends. It's, I've seen it helps, people wear HEPA, but... HEPA masks, which which are really good for that kind of thing. But it's usually full face then too, with two breathing HEPA filters on either side. Right. Well, yeah. Let's assume that few people have those. Uh, yeah. Phew. yeah well google says n95 is uh, is a respirator type mask mm -hmm. and surgical masks are um for large uh, particle droplets mm -hmm. so um i think it's probably this also the size of the particles that get filtered um it would seem is one of the differences for those. okay all right. Well, that was sort of, sorry as a little bit of a uh, a side uh, yeah. um, a side road. But let's go on to one uh, B. Discuss the status of town operations. Um, and let me hear from Brian on that, please. So Brian, I just unmuted you, so we didn't hear what you said. Yeah, I know. I just noticed that. That was good, huh? <laughs> um. I think we talked, I think we covered a lot of it. Uh, okay. It sounds like there's other than sort of, so we have fire and police, we have, they're going to respond to emergencies. Um, I talked with John and I talked a little bit before and he doesn't have any, he has a meeting scheduled, but that can be canceled. He doesn't have any trainings or anything. So we'll have police on, um, we'll have to discuss. I think a decision point is what we'll have to do with um, the highway department. Um, most people in the town offices have the ability to work from home, except for, you know, those few times where we, someone might need to access, Lynn mentioned the, the state computer. Um, other than that, there's the capability to work from home for most people, except for, I think, the highway department. Um, so, uh, yeah. you know, we'll have the ability to, to definitely function for the next two weeks. If, if we keep the regular select board meeting, we'll meet April 8th. Um, that would be the day after the, this current order expires. So we could, I mean, my, my thinking was we'll, we'll figure out the next two weeks at this meeting and then we can reassess yeah. where we go after um, April 8th. But, okay. Uh, I think most people can work from home except for except for the highway department, I think. Right. 
Right. Uh, Maybe one other uh, crew, that could be the cemetery crew if something happens. Maybe you should briefly touch on that. I don't know who does that, actually. Oh, I didn't even really think about that. That's Darcy. Um, yeah, we should reach out to her. Well, her and Neil Abrams, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's nah. on Brian's plate to do that. They may not need to do anything in the next two weeks, but shortly thereafter, I imagine the cemetery crew may be more active. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's on Brian's plate. So uh, are we ready for the next item? The I, do, I do have a quick update for you. Oh, sure. Um, so I just spoke with somebody from Yankee Candle. The store is closed currently and the factory is as of right now it's closing at noon they have applied for an exemption for, mm -hmm. for being an essential business <clears throat> um so they'll see it, it could change tomorrow it could change next week but as of right now that's their plan is to, to close at noon okay and, and they're essential how uh, no, no, no. No, they, they have needed to apply. candles yesterday. Yeah. We had to, we had a power outage on Westbrook Road, and I had three Yankee candles going. So <laughs> that's essential. As long as we're talking meetings, a question for Brian. Yeah. Is uh, FERCOG meeting on the tip going on this week? Yeah, I forwarded you call. I I should have forwarded you call uh, call in information. Is that today or? Yeah, today at noon. Today at noon, okay. Um, hey, Lynn, um, the the life path is still delivering food and and making as much food as possible for seniors, um, and we have systems set up to increase home delivery for seniors who have decided not to go out. If I send you a script, could you put out a robocall on that? Because I, I, I want to make sure that seniors know that that they can get food without risking their health. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. I'll send you a script this morning. Thank you. Okay. All right. Are we ready for the next item? The personnel related issues? due to the state of, of the emergency. I think we've touched on them a little bit, um, but we may have some specific issues to deal with. Let me uh, turn it to Brian there. Yeah, I mean, so the difficulty will be anybody that we ask to not come in, um, what do we do in terms of pay? Um, and it always seems to affect several people um, assuming everybody else has the ability to work from home and does so during this two week period. Um, options are we could pay them. I know a lot of towns are, are paying non-essential employees. Um, the other options are there could be leave time, but I think that's probably problematic. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's really, I think a policy decision for the board as to what, um, it wants to do. I think we should pay him. I, um, I agree with John. I'd like to add that anybody who is you know, being paid um, but not coming in should be consider themselves on call because we don't know what what's going to come up that we might need a pair of hands or uh, you know or, or some kind of help with. Um, and I, I think it would look I mean, I don't know that people can realistically do this, but if they're like, well, I don't have to go to work, now I'm going to go off on vacation and have a paid vacation, I think that would really look bad. So I think I would, re I mean, people are supposed to be more or less sheltering in place. So I would like to kind of add on to that, that if you're being paid and not coming into work, and this is like for the next two weeks, right? We're making a decision for on a two week time frame then we should, those uh, employees should be considered on call because things can change. Um, and we want to have the flexibility to be able to call them back if we need them. I would agree with that. I mean, I think as employees, if, if we're paying them, 
we they need to consider themselves sort of visible exactly. leaders to make sure that people that they are sheltering in place. Um, I, I don't think that we should see them wandering around town if they're if they're being paid and and um, yeah. and not working. I mean, they they get out obviously, but I agree with I agree with George. <laughs> Okay, I, I guess I can go along with that, but at the same time, I is there a mechanism that they would call somebody to tell them they're they're not coming in? How, how, who's keeping track of that? Or are they just not going to show up and you're assuming they're getting paid? Brian, maybe you know. Um, supervisor. I, yeah, I think they. Sh I think people should report to their supervisors. Okay, but you got well, in your office there. If, if somebody isn't coming in, I I guess they would call you, right? Um, let's talk. Let's talk. Okay, Cynthia. If Cynthia decides not to come in, uh, typically she would she would she would communicate to us at the town offices. Yeah, <clears throat> we usually communicate amongst ourselves on a text message about about right. our offices. Yeah. If you're there every day, it's a little different than people that are there, say, only two days a week, I think. Yep. Yeah, she lets us know that whether she does. Be. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think I would, I, I think we would ask that, that department heads communicate with, with mom, with their employees as to what the expectation is. And I, I guess I have a question for Keith. If, is there any useful online training that these guys can do? Bay State Roads or Maya or anything that can <clears throat> that they could do online? Um, I I don't know. I mean, I know Don. I know Doug doesn't have access to a computer. Okay. Um, I I'm assuming Brian and Dylan do. However, I'm not. I'd have to go into do some research to see if there's anything that I could have them do online like that. But Doug certainly wouldn't be able to at the moment. Okay. Well, um, I, I'll communicate with Keith offline more about this, but if there's somebody who needs a computer to do something, I actually have an old, a uh, couple of you know, relatively old, but in good shape computers. And I might be able to loan out if they have internet access. No, oh, see, uh, they don't even have internet work. access. Let me work with Keith out. offline in case, because uh, I don't want to take up time during this meeting on that. So, so can um, I get a little clarification? Um, as far as town offices, are is the select are they is the select board suggesting that everyone stay home? I don't think we've got to that part yet. Okay. I yeah. just want to make it be clear. So. Yeah. Um, so I, as, from what I understand on that, and Brian, jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. We have a, a draft list of, of essential employees um, and uh, some uh, directives that go with it. Um, so for example, essential employees can continue to work from town buildings, um, then uh, others, uh, even if you're essential, but your work can be done at a uh, distance, then work from home as much as possible. Um, it seems to be the directive. Um, does that seem like a, I mean, it's kind of a summary, but is that what we're talking about, Brian? Yeah, I think that's that. That's what my recommendation was, is, is that, that and that everybody try to work from home as much as possible. If you need to go in, if you need to go into the offices or the facilities to do something that's essential, and that's I, I understand that that varies by department and time of year and things like that. But we're talking two weeks. If you need to go in because there's equipment there that you need to use, then you would go in to do that. But otherwise, I think it's important that that people would work from home. I don't know if that's my recommendation to the board. 
Okay. Well, would this be um, a good time to take a look at that um, draft uh, essential employees list and just kind of go through it and see if what we're reading seems reasonable, if people have things they would want to um, add to that, then then that would be that would be fine. Maybe this is, uh, does Lynn, do you and, and Keith have a copy of that to look at? Um, are you talking about the COOP plan? Uh, there was a Word document that came with that, but it just, yeah, so it's based oh. on pages three and four of the Waitley COOP plan. Okay. So, uh, do yeah, you have I noticed that that does need to be updated. So, as a matter of fact, the whole plan. So, that is something I can do at home on my. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. there you go. Very good. Very good. Well, um, perhaps um, I can share my screen with what we've got so that we're all looking at the same thing. Let me look. Okay, there we go. Share that. Okay. All right. So can everybody see that um, uh, essential employees yes. draft list? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. So uh, taking it from the top, um, the administrative select board and town administrator essential employees are Brian and Amy. Essential board is the select board. Um, with the directive to work from home as much as possible, take actions to reduce risk and limit in-person public interactions. That seems reasonable. I don't see something to add to that, but does anybody here see something that might need to be uh, added to those uh, directions? I just I have one question. I guess it's a clarification thing. If if there was, you know, from a police or, or fire perspective, if if we were um, exposed to somebody, for example, and an officer, myself or Don, full time employee, um, contracted something, and we had to stay away, is that going to be considered like an injured on duty type of thing, or workers comp, or how's the how's the town going to handle? If I had to stay out for two weeks or if I was ended up in the hospital, I mean, are we filing claims for that or are we just going to continue um, paying, the, paying the employee? I'm not sure how that's going to work. I thought there were some directives from the government about two weeks of paid sick leave, but maybe Brian knows more. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good summary is that mm -hmm. federal legislation that, that um, would allow people to be paid under FMLA um, if they were to contract. Um, it's actually broader than that. Um, right. It covers if people they would have need to quarantine. It, if they need to be quarantined, um, if they have childcare issues, there's um, there's mandates um, as to how that's handled. Um, we got an email from from our insurer and um, they were. They made some comments about, well, if, if you contract it, you still need to prove that it was contracted on the job, which is kind of difficult to do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But my, my understanding is that um, if, if one of those situations were to arise, then there would be additional um, paid sick leave that would be in place that employers need to provide. Okay. And that's the way I understood it as well. I just wanted to make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay. All right. So um, as, as we go along, if you think of other things that need to be kind of in the directives, then please, uh, please pipe up. Um, next on the list is Board of Health with our uh, health agent, uh, Mark Bushy, as the essential employee and essential board members. Um, being the Board of Health. Um, they don't have any particular directive listed, but I would imagine, you know, working from home as much as possible for the board, um, the employee may need to really be out there. Is that, I mean, you said it again, yes. you might be visiting Yankee Candle to see that they're really closing down and such. 
Yeah, and along with doing all the other typical inspections and uh, permitting that we typically do. Yes. Okay. Doesn't mean we might not be called on at some point if there's a case to do some kind of contact tracing and that kind of stuff. Actually, I'm hopeful that uh, we can get some money to do that, get some help to do that. So that might relieve us. So, hey, anyway. hey Fran, can mm. you explain the typical permitting that, you, that, that the Board of Health does and help us understand how, if it is always time sensitive or can some of those typical permitting issues be delayed for the for a little while well given that most things are closed <laughs> it's almost a um, moot point but at the beginning of the year we typically permit all restaurants and things we do inspections twice a year on those um including the schools by the way uh all title five issues septic anything related to housing or housing complaints or things like that. Some of those can be time sensitive, but most of the permitting is, is not, I'd say. Hey, so. welcome back, Wayne. Um, and we have another person on the call, um, calling in for the cell phone, 588-7618. Can you that's let us Wayne. know who you are? That's Wayne. Oh, that's Wayne by cell phone and by computer. <laughs> okay. So audio by phone and video by computer. Excellent. Um, could we pause here and then go back to ask Wayne about the coming two weeks and operations? So I think uh, we, we missed you, Wayne. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Very yeah, it's connected to the video and the phone. You could probably hang up the Right. His, uh, yeah. So he's muted his microphone, um, but you might have to turn your your computer speakers off if you're using your phone. He's, he's muted. He's when he's <laughs> okay. Cannot hear you. Um, he's muted. Unmute him. He's, yeah, he can unmute himself, which I think he has just done. All right. Is that better? Yeah. The okay. speaker on the computer ain't working. Mm. I see. Um, okay. The, and the uh, the five eight eight seven six one eight. That's you, Wayne, right? Yeah, that's my cell phone. Okay. So I'm muting the cell phone. Uh, go ahead and speak then. Let me know we can hear you. Wayne. What's that? Okay. Good. That took care of some of the echo. Um, on our agenda, we uh, had an item where uh, department heads talked about the current state of uh, operations and operations over the next two weeks. And how are you, uh, you know, ready for that? What kind of things do you foresee and do you have what you need uh, for the next coming two weeks? Yeah, I don't... Me, personally, I don't think I have to change much because I'm mostly by myself anyways. Okay. All right. So well, have but, but Joyce, we need to figure out what, what functions Wayne does are essential and what are not essential because I can't imagine every one of his functions are essential. Yeah. Well, then mm -hmm. let's go back to the uh, draft uh, essential employees list. Okay. Because uh, that will come up. Water department is on there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going back to uh, uh, that list, which you should be able to see if you've got the screen up. Um, the yeah. talk, just talked about the Board of Health. Now in the police department, uh, it's got uh, Jim and Don and part-time officers listed as essential employees. And we've got, uh, with the directive, work from home is not possible. So take actions to reduce risks and to follow the policy implemented by the chief using personal protective equipment. And uh, Jim kind of reviewed some of that earlier. Um, um, are there any things that you think need to be added to that directive? It refers to your 
to your policy, Jim. So that's yeah. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, things are changing as as everybody else is dealing with as well. But like yeah. our our jails were closed. Now they're open partially to certain things. So our my policy or my standing orders kind of are changing sometimes day by day. So I'll keep that up. <laughs> but I don't think it needs to reflect in here. <clears throat> okay. I, I have a question, maybe more directed towards Brian. Uh, in talking about essential employees, I think we need to take a careful look at that and decide, you know, okay, here, police department, you've got two names listed, plus you've got eight or nine other people. Uh, I think including everybody is really – saying too many of them are really essential and where it may become an issue if a part-time employee officer here gets infected or quarantined is he eligible for the the compensation or is it only the ones that we identify here as essential employees i mean you could do the same thing with fire department you've got what 25 volunteers are they all essential yes um I think in a way, I guess they they are because they're helping protect the safety and health and welfare of the of the town people. But yeah. is that how you define an essential employee? Um, yeah, I think. I so. um, uh, I mean, the the only other option we have would be to reduce our on on shift police officers. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously Don and Jim would have full access to to to, to pay if they were to, to, to come down with, with cor the coronavirus. Yep. But part-time officers, when they get ordinarily sick, they, they don't get paid because they're not filling shifts. So wouldn't they fall into that same category of they're sick, so they're not going to get paid because they're not working shifts? Well, I believe that they're, and Jim can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that they're eligible. Watch this. I'll I'll have Jim answer that. <laughs> if if somebody were to if somebody were to get injured or something happened while they're working, they would be covered for injured on duty. The right. insurance would cover them. Right. Um, but I think that's a decision for the town. I mean, it's tough to say that if somebody's working one shift and they're only scheduled for one shift a, a month, or they maybe they have two shifts. Um, to, to say that we're going to pay them for 40 hours a week, I don't, you know, maybe you cover for their next shift, but I don't, I don't think we need to cover them for, you know, 40 hours per week. Well, we could, we, you know, we, there's no, yeah. there, the capacity isn't there. Yeah, it would have to be an injured on duty claim. And that's, that's where that would get paid from normally. Because if, if they got injured from the police department and that required them to be out of work from their regular job as well, they would be compensated by injured on duty. Okay. Let's, let's focus just on the virus here for the two weeks. I mean, what would happen if they got infected? Kind of, I think what Jonathan is trying to say, part-time officer goes somewhere and you, and you know he's infected and well, he can't work for the two week period, but he usually works uh, one day every two weeks. Is he qualified to get paid for that or not? I'd have to look at the specifics of the federal mandate, but um, the intent of it is that everybody's made whole. So. Yeah, but then does that person have to be listed here as essential employee or somewhere listed to, to somebody we, knows that no. that's. I think we have to consider them essential in order to have them work. Correct. And um, so that is, I think, the reason why part-time officers are listed there, not specific names, because we don't necessarily have the same officer working the same part-time shift each week. Would that be a reasonable summary, Jim or Brian? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I just didn't have all the names last night when I was putting this together. Um, so I think uh, for two weeks, it puts us at a risk for essentially two weeks worth of uh, part-time budget uh, in terms of if somebody got sick and couldn't come in, we may be required by, Brian's going to look up the, the federal mandate 
Um, so if we are talking about the next two weeks, then like payroll exposure, so to speak, is pretty, pretty small. Right. Jim, are these scheduled already? Uh, we we schedule a month in advance. <clears throat> so April's April scheduled already already out. April first, uh, May schedule will go out. So though we would know. I mean, we could make the changes, but it's just a it's just a matter. Of, the shift will get covered. It's just a matter of whether or not. Um, you know, that, that officer would get compensated for that shift or they would just get bumped out of that shift. <clears throat> okay. All right, so is that something that we can resolve here in this meeting? Do you think? What are you asking? I'm asking, I guess I'm asking Brian. Uh, yeah. It sounds like you, you brought up <clears throat> something about uh, whether or not part-time officers who have to miss a shift because they've got symptoms or something like that, whether they would still get paid, um, I would, I, to me, I don't know that that's resolved at this point. Uh, I'll double check on that, but my sense would be that if they're scheduled to work, which it sounds like they are, uh -huh. my sense is that, um, that they would be entitled to some type of paid leave for that shift. Okay. And if we wrote scheduled part-time officers under police department, would that be tying Jim's hands if somebody can't come in, he can't fill a shift with a, a different part-time officer on short notice? I, I think it, I think it would just because it's the flexibility there. Sometimes, you know, a person, they may schedule be scheduled three weeks out, but then that would have to change. Right. You could okay. change it maybe four. And I don't want, I don't want to have to tie your hands on things yeah. like that. Um, I guess I, I would be in favor of leaving it as it is with our understanding that this is for uh, the next two weeks and it's something that we'll be revisiting. Right. Are you okay with that, Fred? Okay, as long as we, we understand here what we, we're discussing, okay. Yep, okay. Uh, next on the list is the um, fire department. And the fire department says... Uh, hold on, I got a lot of windows here. Um, it says the directive is to work from home if possible for the chief, um, hold only essential trainings, uh, take action to reduce risks and use PPE. Uh, the essential employees are the chief, uh, officers when they are performing essential duties. And my understanding officers are really all, oh, maybe they're not volunteers. Uh, and then the volunteer firefighters when they're performing essential duties. Um, does anybody have any anything to add to that? Are, are there any essential trainings really that are going to happen in the next couple of weeks? And what are they? No. I don't think so. No. Okay. It's like that. How many officers are there? Yeah, if, if an essential training to come up in the next two weeks, would we want the chief to be able to hold that essential training? I'm sorry, Joyce. Um, I, I'm just, we were talking about striking a phrase from this, the phrase being hold only essential trainings. You're saying you don't have any no. essential trainings on the horizon, um, but were something to come up on short notice in the next two weeks, um, I would not want you to be unable to hold an essential training. Um, I think it's okay to leave hold only essential trainings there with the understanding right now that there are none. Um, if things change, which we know things change quickly, then uh, uh, we still have that flexibility. So I would argue that we can leave the text as it is. Um, Fred, John, do you have yeah. a... You had a question hey, for John, how many officers are there? And maybe you should list, should we list some there? I, I wouldn't list them. I have six officers. So oh, there's okay. seven of us all together. Okay, well, that's that's good to know. I, I have no idea how many you had, but okay. Mm -hmm. John? No, I'm fine. Okay. All right, next up is the uh, emergency management director. Um, uh, which is Lynn Sibley and Alan Sanderson as a backup. Yes, the okay. Directive is to work from home if possible. Yeah, most of my stuff can be done from home. 
Okay. Um, then um, the highway department. Uh, the directive is to work from home if possible, specifically thinking, you know, keeping the superintendent in mind for that because they may have work that can be done from home. Then take actions to reduce risks when performing essential functions. I assume that would be if we had to call in highway department employees to do something, um, you know, tree down whatever kind of situations we might, um, we might anticipate. Under essential employees, we've got uh, Keith Bardwell, uh, Doug, Brian, and Dylan, but only when performing essential functions. And this is where I sort of feel like this means the, those people are mostly on call. That's, right. I don't know if we want to put that word in, uh, but on call for performing essential functions. Correct. You know, as I said before, some of the things, you know, my phone, I, my office phone, I can call forward to wherever I happen to be at home or on my cell phone. Um, I, when it comes to doing some of the vital things, such as if I need to still submit payroll and bills, I, if I come into my office for that, it would be minimal, minimal exposure because at that point in time, um, and so I can perform those essential functions as necessary, but as we've all talked, there's really not, not much I can, I'm definitely worth looking into, see if I can do some online training, at uh -huh. least maybe not with Dougie, but with the other two, I'll look into that. Okay. Um, would it be um, okay to add to the directives? Um, uh, employees are considered on call for performing essential functions under the directives. I think so. That's fine. I mean, that is fine. Why is it bothering you? Which one? Oh. Yeah, I don't know how long we're going to be on. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that much longer, Fred. I'd give us 20 minutes. Okay, no, that's that's fine. Uh, okay, so I added some um, verbiage there. I'm still struggling with the spelling. Um, there we go. I'll go ahead and use traditional spelling for these words. Um, employees are considered on call for performing essential functions. Um, so that they should be more or less available. Uh, is there something to, um, yeah, and that might be enough um, that uh, they should be practicing, um, you know, just as we all should, um, you know, social distancing and um, separation. I don't know how to put that in here though, if that's, I don't know if, he, if anybody understands kind of what I'm struggling with here. So the thing I'd mentioned before about, you know, people who are being paid and not having to come to work, um, sh you know, should be behaving responsibly, I guess. And I don't really know how to put that in. Does anybody have a suggestion for wording? No, I, I wonder whether we're overthinking it a little bit, Joyce. I think that people, that supervisors can, <laughs> can, yeah. Make sure that their employees policies. know how they're how they're expected to act. Okay. All right. And it says only a two week period. If we need to, right. we're going to be revisiting this. If we have to insert something, then we can insert something at that time. Okay. Um, the next one is treasurer, tax collector, town clerk, with the directive to work from home as much as possible, take actions to reduce risks, limit in person public interactions. The essential employees here being Lynn Sibley and Janet Scully. Do we have any comments on that? Um, probably the most critical or essential function for Janet would be payroll. Um, there is, I, because that is an online function, it is something she could probably do from home, except that she would need to get everyone's payroll sheets electronically. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, which may prove it, it may prove just easier to have her come in and do payroll um, in the office because we're close to the public right now. Um, it's we are already avoiding public interactions. Um, we aren't. I, I've instructed that we aren't doing notary services anymore. They will need to go to other uh, locations for that function. Um, we, the only other function that may come up as far as the town clerk side of things is marriage intentions. I think a lot of people are postponing their weddings at this point in time, but if someone needs to file marriage intentions, that is something we would have, we would need to do. Um, other than that, uh, picking up the mail, processing it, we don't want, uh, people's checks to sit for long periods of time. Um, but a lot of those things, like I said, if I bring my treasure collector computer home, I could pick those up and, and do that work at home. Either that or come in um, for one day and enter all that stuff, um, then sanitize everything I've touched for the day and then uh, head home. I think limiting the interactions here in the office between employees, we may be able to to each come in on a different day um, to avoid, you know, interactions. Um, and that might solve some of the issues for having to get something done in the office uh -huh. specifically. Otherwise, we could work from home. All right. Uh, I have a so question. It's more of a technical question. Lynn's mentioning that she could maybe take a computer home or something. Is there, from the FERCOG's perspective, do they have like a secure network that she wouldn't be able to access from her home email or her home mm -hmm. um, network? Or is there something, you know, do they have a firewall that only allows from the town's IP address? I'm not sure if we know that or not. I don't need to access the FERCOG's accounting system. Um, that would the town accountant would be accessing that, and they can do that remotely. Uh, Dara's doing a lot of her work right now from home because she's got three kids at home. Um, so uh, the only time would be probably Catherine coming in to actually enter the vendor warrant. So she, unless we wanted to scan in mm. all the bills to them which it's it may be work. better to just have her work on Thursdays mm -hmm. um, and each of the rest of us pick a different day to work um, that she could complete her work and uh, Dara can do her work from home and Catherine can do her data entry on Thursdays. I don't know if that makes sense to other people or not, but it seems like just choosing a day when it might be most important for us to be here. Um, mm -hmm. That may be the easiest way to do it for a physical, the stuff we have to do physically here. Otherwise, um, we can do stuff from home. Okay. It sounds to me, just summarizing, that you and Janet and uh, the other folks involved with payroll and treasure collector related things, uh, that you've already figured out a good way to keep Things, essential things running and uh, get the work done in a way that maximizes your, um, you know, your your safety. You know, taking actions. Uh, I guess in the document, take actions to reduce risks and limit in-person public interactions. But you've already figured that out. Is We've that, been trying. <laughs> and and that you've got a good first plan. And that first drafts are always things that get amended. You may think of other things later, but I uh, right. I I applaud that you've really kind of sorted this all out already for us. Mm -hmm. um, okay, next on the line is the uh, town accountant, which Lynn kind of covered, uh, work from home as much as possible, take actions to reduce. Uh, I think that's kind of covered already with what Lynn has said. Um, building and code inspections are next with the directive to work from home as much as possible, take actions to reduce risks and limit in-person public interactions. Uh, 
for uh, enlisting Jim Hawkins, Dave Roberts, uh, and plumbing and electrical uh, other inspectors. We don't. So this is through Burkhart. the Franklin County uh, Cooperative Inspection Program. So I can we can't really send them a directive, but we could tell them what we think they should be doing in Waitley. Uh huh. And to the extent that there are employees, because we're their customers, um, we we consider them essential. That means it's okay for them to work in our town, right? If there's things that they need to do, yeah. yeah um, similar right. to any any other types of inspections that that Fred had alluded to. Um, yeah, I don't want to keep people from getting plumbing or electrical inspections if they're needed during this two weeks. So I think keeping it on here is is good, even though they're not technically our employees. Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe maybe directive should be replaced with the word expectations, but yeah. Um, yeah. yes. Okay. All right. So uh, going down next, uh, water department. Um, I'm not sure why it says elected because I guess that's the um, the elected water commissioners. Yeah, the water commissioners are responsible for really supervising the water superintendent. Oh, okay. So um, the the directive would be to work from home as much as possible, take actions to reduce risk, and limit in-person public interactions with essential employees. Uh, Wayne and Bill Smith as a backup and essential board members are listed, uh, George, Paul, and George Ann. Um, I think uh, Wayne has already <laughs> said there's very little that he does in, in large crowds, right? So is there anything people feel we need to add to that? Okay. No, maybe. There might be one thing, but we've been having weekly conversations with the DEP on this. We got by, I think it's June, I'm supposed to have 20 lead and copper samples done, which means I got to get into 20 houses in town. <laughs> I think they'll waive that. Huh? I think they'll, that can be waived if you ask them at this point. Dear, yeah, we got another, I don't know, uh, what would you call it? It's one of these things where everybody calls in and everybody talks with each other. And there's another one happening today, and that hopefully that's what they're going to decide that they can, okay. we can put these off until later. Okay. All right. Well, this is for the next two weeks, right? Were those samples things that they would possibly want in the next two weeks? No. Okay. But the problem is, is because we put these filters in, we went from 10 samples every three years to 20 samples twice a year. Okay. And I got to get them by... I think it's the first week of April, a list of 20 houses so they can approve them as sample sites, which means the worst thing it means is getting into these 20 houses and making sure they actually have copper pipes. Okay. Which right. hopefully, I mean, I sent them an email saying that I'm probably not going to be able to get into these houses, but I haven't heard back from them yet. Okay. All right. So <laughs> it doesn't sound like there's um, much we can do about that, but we sounds like they're, you're likely to get an extension on your homework, Wayne, from what <laughs> hopefully. hopefully that will happen at your meeting tomorrow. So, okay. Yeah. So let's keep that in the back of our minds, though. Okay. Hey, we're almost to the end here. Um, under uh, assessors, we've got one essential employee, Cynthia, and then the essential board members, uh, Fred, Melanie, and uh, Kathleen. Um, 
Cynthia is actually here in my office, so. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Uh, there's no directive here under assessors. Um, I, I wonder if it should be just the same directive we've had for uh, for all of these others, or is there a reason why there's no directive on the assessors, Brian? No, it was supposed to be the same as the other one. Okay, I yeah. will do that. Uh, I would be interested to hear from Cynthia what's what's essential in the next two weeks. Yeah, Cynthia, go right ahead. Um, well, uh, there's not a whole lot happening right now. In fact, I was going to spend the rest of today just sort of working on cleaning up files that have not been maintained as well as they might have been. I also thought that if I could take that old computer home, that's been a topic of conversation with Brian, that I do have email access on there to the uh, to uh, the assessor's email account. So I could keep up with whatever was happening coming in from the DOR or whatever. Can that email account be added to a home computer? I'm hesitant Hi. to do it because I've had so much trouble with my laptop, which was why I was hoping to be able to actually get the old computer from here if it wasn't otherwise needed. Okay. I hesitate to try to add it, but I mean, I can try. Okay. Well, um, that particular that issue, can we uh, leave that to um, to you and Brian to work out? Hey, Brian, you're her immediate supervisor, right? Or no, the Board of Assessors is. The Board of Assessors. No, okay. Right. Who, so whoever is the relevant uh, authority, <laughs> which I don't, I, now now I know it's the, uh, the board members. I think that's probably their call and not the Board of Selectmen's call. Um, I certainly, personally, I have no objection to... Uh, you being allowed to take the computer home, but I don't think it's in my power to make that decision. Does that sound about right, Brian, Fred? Yes. Yeah, we'll work it out. Okay. So, uh, so we, we're basically giving it a, a, a no comment, certainly not prohibiting. Okay. Uh, the only other thing, just before you, you finish with this, is. Can you speak uh, up, Cynthia? It's really hard to hear you. Oh, okay. Come closer. Um, the only other thing that, you know, sort of needs to be kept up to date is is abatement applications coming in. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else really timely. Probably not. It's probably mostly just keeping up with uh, with motor vehicle abatements because the first commitment went out, so there's always quite a few of them in that first first commitment. That, other than that, uh, I could certainly come in, you know, part of a day each week, whatever, just to check on the mail, mm -hmm. but it's not. Okay. Not are, are the abatements time sensitive, though? Really? I mean, isn't most of this being delayed at some level? I think most of it's being delayed. Yeah, I don't think any of it is. Is particularly time sensitive. How long is this being projected for? And I know everything is just a projection. Right now, we're talking about the, the coming two weeks. Um, okay. And everything would be reassessed at that point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like Cynthia's done there. So it sounds like we're, we're putting in the, the usual directive uh, and we're leaving it to the uh, assessors to uh, help decide on the moving of a computer from the town office to Cynthia's home. Um, next on the line is the transfer station um, where it's a, a <laughs> work from home as much as possible. Yeah, bring your, bring your uh, chance there. Isn't really a, a, a big option there, but uh, take actions to reduce risk. Fran's already talked about what they're doing um, uh, and limit to limit the public interaction. Um, we've got Quint as an essential employee. Are there other 
employees yeah. you would like us to list there, Fran? Yes, we have um, John Lewa is a backup. Actually, yes, John Lewa, L E W A. V A. Leva. L E V A. V A, sorry. Um, who else do we have? She's pregnant, so I don't want to list her as a backup at this point. <laughs> um, uh, Roger. Roger he Hewart. Huard. Huard, H U A R D. What's the what's the woman's name that's there almost all the time? Regina, but she's not a staff member per se. She is oh, a she's... volunteer. Oh, I didn't and know. And we're asked, that. we can't make her an employee, though. Although I'd love to, because she is on disability, and she should not be doing any heavy lifting. Or she has. Um, yeah, she got an operation, right? Yes, and she yes. So um, we we're. We asked her not to come if she feels at all, um, you know, sick or anything like that. So she wasn't there on Saturday, and I, you know, I hope she will take heed and not show up if she does feel sick. <laughs> yeah, you know, Fran, I think that we should. She's great. I, I think she's outstanding. But I think we should really. I think it needs to be more more than an encouragement. It, it, you know, she's yeah. she's health compromised. She's a volunteer. We're telling people to, re we're telling the general public to restrict yes, their movements yes. in town. So I, I don't think it should be an option. Should be at all. Yeah, probably, probably right. Yes, I, um, I'll call her and let her know. Okay. Is there anybody outside of Quint, John, and Roger who uh, should be there or should be allowed to be there? <clears throat> Well, we have another backup, but she's pregnant, and thus I don't want to list her. And let's then let's not list her. Yeah. Um, and essential board members. This would be the solid waste committee. Right. Um, I think you guys are well <laughs> you're solid and you're essential, but I don't have any names here. So could I put in names? <sighs> yes. Uh, you could start with me. There's Quint, <laughs> who's on the committee. Uh huh. And Larry Kuttner. Okay. Okay. So those are the only board members you have at the moment? Yes. Okay. Right. Hey, Joyce, yes. John and Roger, shouldn't we put as requested there? Hmm. I mean, they're only essential if they're absolutely necessary. We don't want all three of them working at, at one time, I don't think. Right. Okay. No, but we have talked about splitting shifts so that there's um, <coughs> possibly less exposure. So right, may... but not simultaneous. No. Okay. So uh, what would be the right um, verbiage here? Like backup for John and Roger? Yes, they're backups. Okay. Right. Anything else I should add to this transfer station document or part of the document? Okay. Um, the library says it's not an essential service and should remain closed. So leaving that chart yeah, blank. Cynthia did call me today and ask whether she should report or not. Is she one of those folks that if she has something to do, she should work from home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think, okay. yeah, anybody who's who's not listed on here, if they can work from home, fine. They're just not going to go in, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. You should probably have a name there, though, to it. But she's not essential. There's, yeah, right. the list is just the essential employees. Uh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Joyce, I have a question for Fran. Shoot. Uh, would it make sense? Because I know I, I dropped off last Tuesday. I dropped off a couple of masks. Mm -hmm. uh, do we need anything for your current staff that's going to be there? Do we need more masks, gloves? Do we need things for them? I think if you have a couple more sets of masks and gloves, it would be great. Okay. Just just for the backups. Mm -hmm. And maybe for Quint. Yeah. Should, should these be N95 masks or should they be something less than that? I know those are in short supply. 
<laughs> that's all that's all we have as far as I know right now. So to take what you have. Yes. Yeah. It's, we don't have our own supply. You just have first aid supplies. Yeah. Okay. Would, would a surgeon was a would a surgical mask that Joyce is talking about people making be sufficient? Uh not if we can get the the mask Jim is talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're not that bulky. They they have a little respirator hole and yeah. they work. Oh, my concern is that yeah, but they're in very short supply. Yeah, well, um, you know, we don't absolutely need them, but uh, you know, if you're if they're just sitting around. <laughs> yeah, they're they're probably going to have the most exposure. Yeah. At this point. That's right. So it, that sounds like it might be a reasonable thing to to do. I have also heard of people putting a surgical mask on over their N95 mask to make their N95 mask last longer. So, but, <laughs> so well, there's that. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're almost at the end of this. Um, it says all other boards, committees, and commissions see meeting guidance previously adopted by the select board. Uh, summarized here as if you don't need to meet, don't meet. If you need to meet, meet remotely. Only meet in person if absolutely necessary and the uh, directive from the select board uh, would give Brian and myself kind of the last word on whether uh, it, it was absolutely necessary. Uh, South County EMS and the Senior Center are under the Board of Oversight so we don't have to make a decision here. I think they are uh, on top of that. And then the Tritown Beach, uh, certainly within the next two weeks, is not essential and should not open. Um, it's under the direction of a different board uh, and uh, subject to Board of Health regulations. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, so that's sort of not under our control. But we'll go ahead and change regulations to the traditional spelling. Um, do, does anyone see something that we may have missed? or feels need to be added or need to be amended from that last page? The schools are still closed, so we don't need to, for as far as the next two weeks, we don't need to have anything in here for the, for the schools. Yes, correct, correct. Okay. Um, so, uh, as a board, um, so maybe this is a good question for Brian. Do we need to basically approve this uh, document of uh, essential employees and boards? Um, right now at our meeting, would that be a good thing to have a, a motion and a vote on? Um, I would think so, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to, to uh, adopt this this administrative sheet as currently written. I would second that. Is there any further discussion? Okay, then uh, since it's a remote meeting, we need a, a roll call vote. Uh, I'll start with John. Um, yeah. All in favor? Yep. Uh, Fred? Yes. Uh, Joyce? Yes. Okay, good. That's, that item is settled. That, great. So uh, we've got one last item on the agenda uh, to request permission from the Department of Local Services Services to deficit spend the emergency management account and other accounts as needed. Uh, is that something where a motion and a vote will yep. do? But maybe Brian can explain a little bit more about what that means. So when there's a declared state of emergency, the select board can request permission from uh, the Department of Local Services or Department of Revenue um, to be able to deficit spend the account. So this is an exception to the rule that we need to have an appropriation for any spending that we do. Um, I don't know. Um, I'll say I have no idea what our costs will be. Um, but this at least gives us the, the opportunity to do that. The last time we did this was when we had the tanker rollover on 91. We did the similar thing. Um, but it's, it's just there in case we need it. Okay. I'll make a motion to, to request that we can go into deficit spending. 
Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? John? Yep. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Okay. Um, I think that is all that is on our agenda. Uh, Brian, is there anything that we may have missed inadvertently there? Um, I think we should have some type of motion in terms of in terms of how we plan to pay people who are oh, okay um just to have it on the record as to people who are asked not to come into work and who are not working from home okay then the language is something like a, a motion to again because this meeting is was regarding the next two weeks a motion to pay people re that we request not to come to work over the next two weeks, regardless of whether they are at work or not. Yeah, um, I would entertain language on that. Um, well, the, the, the town has a policy that will pay people over the next two weeks, regardless of mandatory attendance or not. Okay. Can you add something like um, their regular work hours or something? Yeah. Okay. Pay their regular work hours over the next two weeks. Okay, so I'm going to actually start uh, typing this in since we're still on that shared document. Uh, that might be a good motion to have uh, some verbiage uh, agreed to. Um, uh, I move to um, to have a policy to pay uh, down employees essential or non-essential doesn't matter at this point doesn't matter i didn't know if you wanted to include it in the language no we want to people, the other. we don't want people losing their uh their source of of income um their regular hours regardless of whether um no oh, it's not off the side of the screen so you can see what a great typist I am here. Um, this, uh, whether uh, they are required to, to work uh, for the period starting uh, now, uh, which is March 24th, 2020, through April 7th, Brian, is that right? Um, or should we say April 8th, since that's when our next meeting is? Uh, it, yeah, the governor's order ends April 7th, as of, as of now, and our next meeting would be April 8th, if we keep our regular schedule. Okay, well, I'm willing to go to April 8th, yeah. uh, through April 8th, 2020. Okay. So I just want to make sure that the, the wording is clear on that. Uh, we would have a motion to have a policy to pay town employees their regular hours, regardless of whether they are required to come to work for the period starting, uh, maybe I'll just say March 24th, 2020 through April 8th, 2020. And George, as that's written, does that mean that, let's say someone doesn't want to come to work? I think we should include something about however the expectation is people will work from home or otherwise be on call, something like that. Okay. Does that cover it? Yeah. What was the phrase we used up here with the uh, uh, or essential functions. Okay, so I've added to that uh, statement. Um, we expect all employees to work from home when possible or be on call for performing essential functions. Because that's the that's the verbiage we used up with the highway department. I'll make that motion. Um, 
Fred? Sorry, I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? And, and just clarify the, the April 8th date. I, I guess I've heard different dates from April what, 6th and 7th. And now we got the 8th. I put the 8th because that's when our next meeting will, is likely to be. Right, when right. we're going to be reassessing things. But all these so declarations the that either the governor has made or, or health agencies or whoever, or even our emergency declaration, are they all the same? I don't think they're all the same date. And, and what do we, I know what this is for now. Right. I'm looking beyond this to when these other measures apply for. Oh, okay. I don't know. I can I'm just tell you the reason I put April 8th, Fred. Yeah. The reason I think April 8th is an important date is because all of this we're thinking about is essentially for the next two weeks. Right. And so if we are, want to reassess any of this, and make changes, uh, April 8th is our next chance to make changes to that. Well, we, uh, can, we can make changes anytime. We don't have to wait for that meeting. That's true. That's absolutely true. We, don't, we do not give up the right to make changes earlier than that, but we have a regular meeting scheduled for the 8th, and I think on that meeting on the 8th, if we have not made changes, I mean, we can make changes then as well, no matter what. But that I just that's a date when we will take a look at this and make changes even if we haven't done so up until that point. Okay. And if there's no need to make changes, then this holds through April eighth. Brian, were you gonna say something? I, no, I was. I Fred, I, I think that I think the eighth is very safe. I, I think that I, I'm I'm pretty confident that the eighth is a moot date anyway because it's gonna be extended. It's not going to end before then. I think the next conversation is going to be how much longer we extend this. So I, I don't think this is this this is a necessary conversation really because the eighth is a minimum date. Everything's going to be extended. Well, then should we say through the eighth or as necessary or extended? No, because it's. It's sort of like it, it's sort of like what we did with the castaways. We put it through a certain date, yeah. and then when that date came, everyone knew that we had to, to 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 reinvent the wheel every every date that passed. Okay, so we'll meet it. We'll meet on April eighth to decide what to do next. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll second the motion. Okay. Alrighty. That sounds like we've had um, all the discussion. or likely to have a need a roll call vote then john yep fred yes joyce yep okay um so let me ask again brian and lynn especially um is there anything else you need out of this uh meeting today that we haven't done already uh from my side of things i think you're all set um until mima requires us to do something else, but uh, okay. I think we're all set at this point. Okay, Brian? Yeah, I, I think we're all set. Joyce, if you could tell me the copy of this. Okay, I'll email you the copy of that. Um, anybody else who's on the call? Fran, other uh, department heads? Uh, is there something you need that we haven't sorted out? No, but I just wanted to ask Jim, since I believe he has uh, contact to the race organizers for the Mother's Day race. Um, I, I don't know, maybe you've already spoken to them about postponing that this year, given what's likely to be going on at that time. I know it's a ways out, but. Yeah, we, we haven't spoke with them yet. I know some of the other events that were coming up that have been canceled. Um, that's the only one that's kind of up in the air. I haven't spoken with them yet though, but I will. Okay. Very short. Let me know. Hmm. Yep. And I do have one other, I guess it's a logistical thing, maybe for Brian and Lynn, um, with the supplies that we do have, or if we do get more supplies, um, how do we want to inventory these? Or do we want to make somebody responsible for inventorying? Do we have a form that we should use? Or should we create one? Or hmm. Just if, if we do issue out masks and we think we have 24, but we only have 20 left, 
Um, I think we need to keep a running list of that. I'm not sure if you want me to handle that or if you want to figure something else out. You have you have the list that I made previously, right? Yes, <clears throat> but I don't know currently that we have an actual inventory of who has because I know I gave you what I have, but I don't know if we have if John has anything additional from what I gave him or if Wayne's got anything down at the water department, if he's got a box of gloves or anything like that. I'm not sure that we've got an actual inventory town wide. On that on the on the list that I had sent out, there's a there's two tabs. There was a, a needs and a on hand section. Yeah. Um it lists um the item, the you know, the item, the quantity and the, its location. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's sufficient or if somebody wants to create something else. Yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking moving forward, that's, you know, if, if we have, do you want me to text you? Because most of the stuff is going to be here at the police station, which is also the EOC. So right. if, if you want to do more mass, do we want to update that list and I just send it to you? Is yeah. If, if it makes sense to have a different document than what that we have, by all means, please make one. Um, okay. it, it may, it, I think it would make sense with the EOC there um, if that's something that you guys could do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, can, I, can I agree. And also, Jim, um, the on hand has changed. All the gloves that were ordered on the first page yep. are now received. So those, I, I redid the list. Um, so I'll send you what I have now. Okay. I'll email that to you so that um, it's kind of updated. Gloves are, are all set at this point, mm -hmm. um, given our delivery yesterday. Okay. Okay? Sounds good. I'm all set. Mm. Okay. Anybody else on here? Looks like people are happy. Then I guess I would... Uh, say this meeting um, I, uh, I would welcome a motion to adjourn it can't come from john because he just left so fred okay. <laughs> motion to adjourn uh i'll second that all in favor fred? Aye. choice aye Brian, okay. can i talk to you for a minute after yeah i'll give you a call fred oh I'll give you a call okay okay yeah all right thanks everybody all right thanks Thank you. yep, bye. see you tomorrow bye <laughs>